before proceeding further, let us cons consider that the supposed scene of the assassination in the thicket of the at the barrier to Rule. This thicket, although dense, was in the vicinity of the public road. Within were three or four large stones forming a kind of seat with a back and a footstool. On the upper stone were discovered a white petticoat, on the second a silk scarf, a pair of sole gloves, and a pocket handkerchief were also here found. The handkerchief bore the name Marie Roger. Fragments of dress were seen on the branches around. The earth was trampled, the bushes were broken and there was every evidence of a violent struggle. Notwithstanding the acclamation with which this discovery of this ticket was received by the press and the unanimity with which it is supposed to have indicated the precise scene of the outrage, it must be admitted that there was some very good reason for doubt that it was a scene I may or may not believe but there was excellent reason for doubt. Had the true scene been, as late commercial suggested, in the, in the neighborhood of the Rue Pave Saint Andre, the perpetrators of the crime, supposing themselves still re resident in Paris, would naturally have been stricken with terror at the public attention thus acutely directed in the proper channel. And in certain classes of minds, there would have been arisen at once the sense of necessity of some exertion to re-divert this attention. And thus, the thicket of the Barrier du Roule having already been suspected, the place of the... the idea of the place in the articles when they were found might have been na naturally entertained. There is no real evidence, although Le Soleil so supposes that the articles discovered have been no more than a few days, a very few days in the thicket. Well, there is much circumstantial proof that they could not have remained there without attracting attention during the 20 days elapsing between the fatal Sunday and the afternoon upon which they were found by the boys. They were all mildewed down and hard, said Le Soleil, adopting the opinions of, the, of his predecessors. With the action of rain and stuck together with them from mildew, the grass had grown around and over some of them. The silk of the parasol was strong, but the threads from of it were worn together within. The upper part, where it had been doubted, doubled and folded, was all mildewed and rotten and torn on being opened. In respect to the grass having grown around and over some, it's obvious that the fact could have only been ascertained from the words, and thus from recollections of two small boys. For these boys removed the articles and took them home before they had been seen by a third party. But the grass would grow, especially in warm and damp weather, such as was that period of the murder, as much as two or three inches in a single day. A parasol lying upon a new turf ground might, in a single week, be entirely concealed from sight by the upspring grass, and touching that mildew upon which the editor of Le Soleil so pertinaciously insists that he employs the word no less than three times in the brief paragraph just quoted, is he really unaware of the nature of this mildew? Is to be told that it is the one of the many classes of fungus of which the most ordinary feature is its upspring and decadence within 24 hours. Thus we see as a glance at that what has been most triumphantly adduced in support, in support of the idea of the articles that have been for at least three or four weeks in the thicket is most absurdly null as regards its evidence to that fact. On the other hand, it is exceedingly difficult to believe that these articles could have remained in the thicket specifically for longer than a period than a single week. For a longer period than one 
Sunday from to the next. Those who know anything of the vicinity of Paris know the extreme difficulty in finding seclusion unless at a great distance from the suburbs. Such a thing as an unexplored or even an unfrequent visited act recess amid its woods and groves is not for a moment to be imagined. But anyone who, being at heart a lover of nature, is yet changed by duty to the dust and heat of this great metropolis. Let any such one attempt, even during the weekdays, to slake his thirst for solitude amid the scenes of the lovely nat natural loveliness which immediately surround us. At every second step, he will find the growing charm dispelled by the voice and personal intrusion of some ruffian or party of carousing blackguards. He will seek immediate privacy amid the densest foliage, all in vain. Here are the very nooks where the unwashed most abound. Here are the temples most desecrated. With sickness of the heart, the wanderer will flee back to the polluted Paris, as to a less odious because less incongruous sink of pollution. But in the vicinity of the city so beset during the work we think, working days of the week, how much more so on the Sabbath? It is now especially that, released from the claims of labor, or deprived of the customary opportunities of crime, the black guard town blackguard seeks the precincts of the town, not through love of the rural, which in his heart he despises, but by way of escape from the restraints and conventionalities of society. He desires the less the fresh air and the green trees than the utter license of the country. Here at the roadside inn or is neat the foliage of the woods. He indulges unchecked by any eye except those of his boon companions, and all the mad access of a counterfe counterfeit hilarity, the joint offspring of the liberty and the buzz of wrong. I say nothing more than what must be obvious to every dispassionate observer when I repeat that the circumstance of the article in question, having remained undiscovered for a longer period than from one Sunday to another, in any thicket, in the immediate neighborhood of Paris is to be looked upon as little less than miraculous. But there are not wanting other grounds for suspicion that the articles were placed in the thicket with the view of diverting attention from the real scene of the outrage. And first, let me direct your notice to the date of the discovery of the articles. Collate this with the date of the fifth abstract made by myself in the newspapers. You will find the discovery followed almost immediately. The urgent communications sent to the evening paper. These communications, although various and apparently from various sources, tended all to the same point. These, the directing of attention to a gang of, as perpetrators of the outrage and to the neighborhood of the Barrier de Rouge as the scene. Now here, of course, the situation is not that, in consequence of these communications or of the public attention by them directed. The articles were found by the boys, but the suspicion might and may well have been that the articles were not found before them by the boys. For the reason that the articles have not been